We were blessed with a huge number of volunteers and supporters going out helping us to recover all of these receivers. And then came the big job of downloading them all and making sense of all that information that's been generated. Now that we're quantifying the number of fish that are going missing, there are obviously a lot of man-made influences that are bringing about some of those losses at least. And we now have an opportunity to start rectifying those and increasing, boosting, if you like, the number of healthy fish that are going to sea. And the graphs were really interesting and steady, you know, a, a kind of steady decline. When they came to the barrier, you had, you know, survival, survival, and then a sudden drop. So it, it really, really highlighted um, where these problems are and it's, it's given us something to work on for this year. It's really important to have accurate science for management of rivers for a whole host of reasons but chiefly among them is to really understand what the problem is and make sure that your intervention is addressing that problem. Th these, these are not new problems but at long last I think we're starting to get the information that's going to be required to manage them. And it was very, very successful, I think, hugely important data. You know, everybody presumed that, you know, the issues were at sea, but clearly we've proved beyond doubt now that there's some pressing issues in fresh water that hopefully we might be able to do something about. What's happened with anthropogenic modification of the environments is that we're causing delays to the smolt migration. In doing so, we're increasing their probability of being identified and caught by a predatory species. We had to look at not just the movement of the salmon smolts, but also the movement of the, of the underwater predators, such as pike and brown trout, but also to look at the scats from various predators to understand um, if and how they were feeding on these smolts. So we've put out an array of receivers in particular bays and particular locations in still water. And that gives us the opportunity to be able to examine before, during and after the smolt run, the behaviour, for example, of the fish predators. But in combination with that, what we're doing is we're looking at bird scat with a view to actually seeing does the bird behaviour change. So there's a big study going on using eDNA, a non-invasive technique, where you're basically collecting gazander cormorant scat samples. And then from analysis of that, you can tell, first of all, well, what, what produced that scat. And you can also tell what the diet consisted of, so. We also did some um, live real-time tracking, sort of going down the river, looking at how those different smolts are faring as they progress down the river, and following them down in a canoe with a receiver, and just checking out their progress. And it was, only done through the really good will and, and dedication of the Atlantic Salmon Trust staff and also the volunteers, those volunteers in the fishery boards and trusts that gave up their evenings, their mornings, their weekends for seven weeks to go and find, trap, tag and then follow these fish. It was a mammoth undertaking.